Hello, and thank you for downloading this video on how to calculate the cyclical trend in a time series decomposition. My name is Patrick Pollard. If you need to download a data set for this information, you can find it at my website, statstutor.books.officelive.com. Just click on the CIDM 2342 page and then download the cyclical data set. Now let's take a look at that data set. We start this video by showing how CMA is calculated. As you can see here, it's D5 plus 2 times D6, 2 times D7, 2 times D8, plus D9, all divided by 8. If you need refresher on how to calculate the CMA, you can see my previous video on calculating specific seasonals. So we take this CA, CMA equation and drag it down till 2 up from the bottom. These are our CMAs. Now we're going to create a trend column. And now we need to do a regression with CMA as our Y and trend as our X. So we go up here to data select data analysis scroll down to regression click OK like I said our input range for our Y is our CMA data our input range for our X is the trend data right next to the CMA data we just entered We did not use labels in the first row. We are going to select our output range to be on this page. We'll put it right over here at N4. Click OK. Now, CMA hat. Here is the equation for CMA hat. In this cell equals our B sub O, F4, plus B sub 1 F4 times trend enter this is our CMA hat we're going to drag this equation down to the bottom of this blue line the next thing we're going to calculate is our cyclical trend cyclical trend is just CMA divided by CMA hat so this is equal to our CMA divided by our CMA hat that we just calculated. And we're going to drag this down to the bottom of the green. Now we're going to do a quick graph where we're just going to insert a scatter diagram just so we can see how these C's transfer around the one line. And what I mean is all C's bounce back and forth around the 1.0. So we're going to insert judgment modification into the pink areas where we're not sure exactly how this trend is going to go. Since I'm not sure if this point comes up from the bottom or comes down from the top, I'm going to create two more points that are just equal to it. So right here, I'm going to put in 0 0.97 for judgment modification and 0 0.97. Now, these dots down here show that it looks like our trend is going back up towards the one line. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up slowly, and then when I get to 1, I'm going to stick with one. So let me show you what I mean by that. I have point zero point nine nine. I'm going to put in zero point nine nine five and zero point nine nine seven and then I'm going to put in one point oh and drag this one point oh 
down to the bottom of my pink area. Okay. Now, if I was to graph this C again, insert a scatter diagram, you'll see that our points now travel back up towards 1.0 and stay at 1.0. This will be figure 1. I'm going to insert a shape of a line at 1.0 all the way across and I am going to make that a black line with a weight big enough to read. There we go. And now let's go ahead and format our data series by adding a line color, a solid line, and blue is fine. Let's take that line style down to 2.0. And this is our C graph. So here our chart title, center overlay, and I don't need this graph so I'm just going to cut it. And now you can see how we calculated the C. Let's use this data that we've just calculated. We're going to copy it. We're going to come down to the next part of our data and put the C in. Right click paste special values only. Now we're going to do a new regression and this regression is going to be a forecast using the data that we have in our trend, seasonal, and cyclical to calculate our forecast, our Y sales for the next four quarters of next year. So to do that we have to go to data, data analysis, do a new regression with new Y numbers. This time we're going to use our Y data and our X data will be trend, cyclical, and seasonal just as far down as we have Y's. I did use labels in my rows this time and I'm going to choose a new output range and I'm going to put this output right here in N41. OK. Now you can see my Y hat formula is B sub O plus B sub 1 T plus B sub 2 times S plus B sub 3 times C. So for our Y hat equals our B sub O F4 plus our B sub 1 F4 times trend plus our, our B sub 2 excuse, F4 times S plus our B sub 3 F4 times cyclical. Enter. Now I'm going to drag this equation down through the end of my dates. And you can see I was able to forecast out my next four years. Let's put this in a chart so that we can show it to a boss. Insert a scatter diagram and we'll take out our, our legend right click on a red dot format the data series we want no markers however we would like a nice solid red line 
with a style at two point font. Then we're going to right click on the blue markers, format that data series, leave the markers in, but let's also add a solid line, and this one will be blue. And we're going to leave that at a two point font. Now you can see that our R square says our forecast is 99.4% accurate. As you can see, our forecasted data is here in the red without the blue dots. The blue dots end in 2009, and here's our 2010 data. Okay, this chart here will be named Figure 2, Forecasted Sales. I hope this information has been helpful. If you need to, you can contact me at pspollard1 at buffs.wtamu.edu or you can just click on my website again, statstutor.books.officelive.com and just go to the Contact Us page. Thank you very much and have a great day.